part of it, I was thinking that I really, I wanted to get uh, Adams Brighter up there somehow, be, be able to show his books. Oh, God, I don't have a bookcase. I was looking around. Do I have a bookcase? Do I have a bookcase? And that's when I realized, <laughs> wait a minute. I, I can go ahead and use my dish because I'm not using it most of the time. That That's the uh, best Easter egg ever. I didn't even notice that. I just did you the didn't whole notice video. The and, and notice what the, the bookend is. Yeah, it's the it's the terminal. It's or the router. router, I mean, yeah. It's it's the it's the router. So um, that's what I put. But the problem was getting this thing to level out. I mean, it was horribly because it takes like about 20 minutes when you turn it on for to to get to there. <laughs> right. And then the only way to stop it is you have to unplug it at the right instant. <laughs> <laughs> and like I'm sitting there trying to because first you're trying to get like is it level? I think it's level, and then it starts rotating around like this, and you're waiting for it to get just to the right place and then do it. And you can never get it quite perfect. It gets to the point that if you get it messed up, you can't unstow it. And then it's like doing everything. I was sitting there, it's like, oh my goodness, what's going on? We have to reboot this thing. So it took me hours to get it actually in that position. Wow. And so I I, I put something out there for Starlink and put out a tweet. Hope they pick it up that they need to add a coffee table mode. Right. Yeah. You just go ahead and it's like put it in a coffee table. Witness. Witness the coffee and not table only that, mode. Is that you can you can definitely use it like for camping because you can put your food on there and it will keep it warm. There It'll you go. It'll be like a hot plate, right? Ooh. The cats like it, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what you can do is like, yeah, not only that, we can use it. We can eat off the thing while we're camping in the RV with this. And <laughs> Hey, y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I am back with Dr. Scott Walter, FUD, <laughs> who's with the thumbs up. Is it working? Are you getting any kind of response? Not yet. No. Not yet. We'll see. Oh, well. All right. Uh, Remember, as, if, like and subscribe. Yeah, if, like and subscribe. There you go. If you may have caught from the last video, we talked for too long, and I think we both got a little loopy by the end of that one. But we wanted to come back, and uh, and we wanted to talk about Xcoin and how this relates to all the way back from Elon Musk's earliest companies, the thing that became PayPal, and what Elon has explicitly stated was the goal of, of X, Twitter, whatever, to become the one app to rule them all. So let's talk Xcoin. So Scott, do you want to introduce us? Let's let's back it up for people who haven't watched the other video about YouTube and Twitter, and I'll put a link to that up here. But just tell everybody where we got started with this, with the chips and all of that. Yeah, well, if I mean, you think about it, a tip jar works pretty well because whatever loose change you have in your pocket, you just throw in a tip jar and it, it's not a big deal. And if you think someone's worth it, you go ahead and do it. And you like to have a tip jar in Twitter if someone is doing a tweet that makes you laugh or chuckle, you think is really good. But th the problem is the transaction cost is very, very high. So it's not even worth tipping someone if the amount is not a dollar. Now, you're not giving them a dollar. By the time they get it, right. they're getting a fraction of that. And you might be thinking, ah, I mean, there's a lot of content creators out there. It's going to cost me a lot of money really quick if I right. keep on tipping a person a dollar here or whatever. However, you probably would not mind tipping a lot of people if the, the if the amount could be pretty small, effectively like 25 cents here and there. Right. And that will add up pretty quickly because you think about Twitter, you have people getting thousands and thousands of views. Right. So even if a small percentage of that decide to give 25 cents, it's going to add up really quickly. So right. the idea is to get rid of the transaction costs and look at it more like poker chips that you go to the Twitter casino and you buy a stack of chips that are worth about 25 cents and you just start doling out the chips here and there to everyone and they can do what they want with it. So they can give that chip to someone else. So we've already talked about this is that I haven't done subscriptions yet, but in theory, uh, if I have subscriptions on in Twitter and you do, and both of us subscribe to one another, it's not right. like we've suddenly evened out. The ledger is even. It's like, right. no, it's still costing us money. So it's still kind of costing me that, that dollar. And then you do it for me. And then you're not giving me that dollar back. You're giving me maybe 30 cents of that dollar back. So right. everything else right. ends up going to the house, so to speak. Yeah. So the, idea <laughs> the house always to wins, think, baby. <laughs> it's to think of Twitter as like this huge poker table. And everyone's sitting around there and they've all bought their chips. And all you're doing is you're moving the chips around the table to everyone. And there is no middleman that is taxing the system. The right. chips flow freely. And it's at the end of the game that you can go ahead and you can cash that in. Now, if they want to then at that point say, all right, there's a cash in fee of, of something amount. Then you can say, well, I don't really want to cash them in. What I'm going to do is I want to bank them. I want to keep them here. Right. And there could be a lot of advantages to it because this coin won't necessarily be pegged to the dollar. It will have some sort of intrinsic value 
that may grow over time, right. very much like any other kind of digital coin. But I mean, the whole idea is currency has absolutely no value if it's not backed up by some wealth. It's right. backed up by the fact that there's people, that there are resources, and there's productivity and everything else going on. So that piece of paper that's a dollar is of absolutely no value. It's just right. an exchange of goods and services in the future. And that's sort of the same thing that's going on with the tipping model, because within Twitter, who knows what other kinds of goods might be produced within that ecosystem that you would find beneficial, and you would just be trading those coins as right. necessary. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think, uh, so again, just to just the, the very, very simplest level, for people who don't know, if if I gave you a dollar on Twitter and you gave me a dollar on Twitter, I think we would each get somewhere around 30 cents. Stripe would get somewhere around 40 or 50 cents. Twitter might get a tiny amount of that money. Credit card company is going to get some of that money. So everybody's taking their cut out of that because of the microtransactions. The smaller yes, the transaction, exactly. the bigger that fixed cost that's associated with it. And so, you know, really you notice that Apple, when they did their Apple Music originally was 99 cents per, per track that you wanted to purchase. And they, they were the ones who kind of pioneered the microtransaction thing with those small transactions, but there's a lot of fixed cost involved in that. And so you don't see that. And so there's a huge drag, there's a financial drag on trading money around in any of these ecosystems. And actually, just after we talked about this, was it yesterday or whatever it was, but I, I saw that Starbucks, I think it was Cold Fusion, did a mm -hmm. video on Starbucks. And he was like, they're a massive bank because they have this loyalty rewards program where effectively you load up your card so that you can then go to Starbucks. And if you buy enough Starbucks, then you, you know, you get a certain amount, like you get a, a free coffee every 10 or whatever it is, something along those lines. But what you've done is you You've, you've taken $20 and you've put it on this virtual card to trade for eventual services. In the meantime, Starbucks has 20 bucks of yours and 20 bucks of lots of other people. And supposedly they have around $10 billion like in the bank right now. And then, you know, and then the other piece of this puzzle, which wouldn't happen with Twitter, which, but well, anyway, with a physical card, you could lose the card. You could forget about it. Somebody could gift it to you and you like don't even realize that you have a Starbucks gift card. So there's a lot of that. that's just dead money. That's just theirs. They, they just get to keep. So it's a really brilliant system. And, and so you could think about what X coin could be, would be something along those lines. So first of all, you're removing that transaction fee, because if you're purchasing in blocks of $20 or something like that, uh, you want it to be like an amount of money that's not super small, but also not big enough that people are going to balk at it. Like if you said the, you know, your minimum buy-in to this casino was 500 bucks, you might be like, whoa, not a big spender, you know. But so if it's something like 20 bucks, you're like, yeah, fine, whatever. And then, you know, you use that up, you tip people, and then it could either auto refill or give you an alert and say, hey, do you want to put another 20 bucks on it? And you're like, sure, whatever. Or what you were saying is it could just do it every month or something and just kind of re-up or whatever. <laughs> It could be part of your subscription fee. So either you add it yeah. on there or maybe mm. you get like um, four coin right. every cycle with if, if you are a verified user. Just to encourage you to say, well, hey, you can use these to, to trade these around because part of the idea of the verification, uh, of, or it's not necessarily a subscription, but with that money, is it not only runs Twitter, but from right. that, they can use that to pay content creators. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what they might be saying is like, oh, okay, some of your money is going to keeping the lights on, but it's also to helping us pay these content creators. Right. And what we'll do is we'll allow you to at least pick out four of them per month or something like that, right. in which it gets directed towards them. Right. Uh, and then, you know, of course, you could potentially <laughs> set these things up that you could get these micro subscriptions. It's like, yes, I want to subscribe to a bunch of people here. For right. 25 cents every month, I know they get that thing. And I right. know they are really going to get maybe 24 cents um, because of the, of the micro. Now, to see how silly it is, this is like an offbeat example, but something that has always driven me crazy. If you go to see the doctor and you think you're going to go there, you think there's going to be one bill. Well, it turns out the doctor is paying for his services. If he's <laughs> yeah. within a hospital, the hospital may send you a bill. If he's done any lab work, there's going to be a bunch of other things. Next thing you know, that one visit can result in about five different bills coming. Now, right. your insurance company might cover a certain amount of it, and every one of them is suddenly sending you a bill for like $3.14. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and okay, now, and of course, they send it to you in the mail. Right. So it comes, which means they had to, to print it out, they had to stuff it in an envelope, they had to mail it <laughs> and stuff like that. It comes, you open the thing up, you end up 
writing this, out the check or you go online or do something like that and you think you pay for it. So let's say you do write the check and send it back. So it's going to cost you the 55 cents for the stamp or whatever stamp is nowadays and everything else. Right. You send it back. Someone then has to open it up because usually it ends up going to some clearing house that's it, like 10 states away from where right. you are. You don't know right. why it always goes to Belfast, Maine for some right. reason. <laughs> they open it up. Someone's got to cut that thing open and then get that check, which is for $3.14. Well, it turns out when you uh, end up depositing that check as a business in the bank, the bank will charge you like 50 cents just for depositing that check. Right. Now you've already got stamps on there. And then the next thing will happen, usually the check will take so long to clear, they will send me a reminder statement. Right. Even though I've already paid it. And sometimes I will get three statements, even though yeah. I paid the statement within it. So I'm looking at it, I'm going $3.14. And they have spent probably $10 to collect that $3.14. Right. It's right. not ridiculous. And yeah. so the whole idea is you're going to get rid of the friction in the system. Yeah. And that I would think that, you know, doctors and everything else, that whole thing should be a ledger. They should have poker chips in there as well. Right. Within there say, we just move all this stuff around. And at the end of the month, we figure out how much does Scott owe? And they just right. send me this and you owe a hundred dollars. And I send a hundred dollars. And then from there, boop, everyone moves it around. Right. Get rid of that friction. And that's what I think should happen everywhere. But certainly Twitter is like the first example. Let's just turn right. it into a big poker table. The chips are just moving yeah. around just, because that's basically what Bitcoin is, right? It's a big ledger of right. poker chips going around. Yeah. Hey, you just jumped the gun because the next topic was going to be about <laughs> blockchain technology. Yes. But, but I think just to, to, to throw that analogy back to you, imagine if you played poker and like every one of the chips, you had to purchase them as you were playing and then the person who was giving you the thing said, oh, I'll take half of that money for me. You'd be like, well, wait a second, what? <laughs> you know, you're know, you not gonna play poker very happily in that. So you probably, probably a lot of times you won't play poker happily anyway, cause you'll lose all your chips, but. <laughs> well, well, we'll think about it, John. I mean, in all those movies, the guy's sitting at the table and he realizes he's out. Right. And then he asks someone to come over and someone comes over and he takes out his checkbook and he writes this big check. He says, oh, right. please get me another $100,000 in chips. And right. of course, you know, he, the steward goes over, gets it, brings it back. And, he comes in, and then, of course, he's going to take one of the chips and one of the high denomination chips and hand it to him as a tip. Exactly. Right? You know, so, yeah. so there you that's go. the example. It's like you keep on going down. By the time you're done, all the money has evaporated. Right. <laughs> exactly. So hopefully that's not OK. That's where the analogy breaks down on Twitter, because in Twitter, what I'm envisioning, and I think you, too, is a, an ever expanding pot. So let's talk about blockchain for just a second. We don't have to get too much into detail about that. But of course, you know, Bitcoin is the is the, the poster child of blockchain technology. But essentially, blockchain is a ledger. So it's it's and it's a it's an open like ledger that everybody can look at, which means that so in this case, creating X coin, it would make a lot of sense to make that or Doge, just use Doge in that case. But I think it'd be fun to have something that was X coin with Elon's face on it and a big X. <laughs> Just be, it'd be amusing. So anyway, maybe X on the back and his face on the front. But but anyway, but these, it's just a ledger. And it just says, Scott has 25 of these. There we go, Elon bucks. <laughs> is that from EV Annex? It is, yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, I recognize it. I have that on my fridge. So um, so anyway, but 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 there is a sense in which the X coin could be worth nothing because it's only exists in the Twitter ecosystem. And that might be the way to start it, but the way to progress the um it up into the next level would be to make it blockchain technology so that then it can have an, a life of its own financially, essentially, that it exists as a real currency outside of any fiat currency, like a dollar or a yen or something. And if that's the case, what you can do is so, okay, so, you know, Scott's got 25 of these that's on the ledger and I've got 30 of these and that's on the ledger, whatever. Uh, it's not going to be worth a lot if they're only worth 25 cents at the beginning or something. But over time, these things could, if if you encourage people, right, if you're like, oh, this is actually blockchain, this is a, a cryptocurrency, this is an actual coin, what are you going to do with it at the end of the month, Scott? Do you want to like cash it in or do you want to hold it? So you might be like, oh, I'll hold it, you know? Uh, well, I'll hold it if there's no reason for me to need the money. If I need the money, maybe. Exactly. But for, right. for the most part, I'm not going to buy a pizza with it because I understand there were. <laughs> pizza example. <laughs> the, the, the person who what was a, a thousand bit chain 
or a Bitcoin I, it, to, to buy. It might have been uh, 10,000. It was a lot. 10,000 10, back in what, 2016 or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I and think it was the, even it, earlier than that, but yeah. <laughs> it wasn't for those hunger pains that you would be phenomenally wealthy, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, it had to be, I think it was around 2011, actually, because by 2016, it was already becoming reasonably, you know, worth. But right. anyway, yeah, so, so, um, so the deal would be, that if you realize that these could have so at the beginning they might only have a value inside the twitterverse and, and you could cash them out at the end for whatever amount of money but you could then also exchange them for goods and services including somebody who entertained you or did a really long tweet thread and you're like damn that was so much analysis that person spent a lot of time i'm going to you know tip them something um but what could happen over time is if you knew that this was an independent currency it might encourage you to hold that currency and so then you're like, well, I'm just going to keep this. And maybe next month I'll get another 15 or something. And the next month I'll get another 20. And so over time you're accumulating this. Well, what is what happens to Twitter or X in that case? They become a de facto bank because right. that's something where I've paid 20 bucks to get my um, 20, 40, 60, 80, if it's worth 25 cents a piece ish. You know, I paid 20 bucks to get my 80 coin. I've then utilized that at the end of the month, I've got something left over. Maybe some people have given me that, but if I decide to hold on to it, that means that the number of coins continues to grow over time because collectively people want it more than they want to get rid of it. And that means that the value of that will go up over time, which means right. that it becomes its own independent currency and X becomes a bank, which if we dial back to what Elon Musk has always talked about since the 1990s, he wants a banking app. He wants something that is all of these things at once, but most specifically that they have a lot of money and that they are effectively a bank. And every time we pay 20 bucks to get our coins to throw in more into that system, that's just money that they're putting in some bank account and they can use it for whatever they want at that point yeah. <laughs> within fiduciary responsibility. Of course, they can't just like throw it on, you know, blow it on yachts and, and, and cocaine or something. So. <laughs> but, and but the other thing you think about it is that depending upon where you are in collecting these coins is that might be a way that you're able to pay your subscription each month. So yes. that's no longer money out. Now, the only thing is like, the government's going to start looking at it and say, well, wait oh, a yeah. minute, how do we do that transaction fee? Because they always want to cut of the money because it becomes a bit more like bartering. And potentially right. you could have the same other thing is that you're going out there on Twitter and saying, oh, I've got a, a, a long form video that's coming out and I need someone who's a good editor. Is there anyone that's out there? Mm, and they true. say, yes. Sure. And they say, I will give you, you know, a thousand Twitter coin right. to do this. And they might be like, yeah, sure. So you'll end up having like these good and services that will be going on within Twitter that would be beyond that. And then again, if you look at uh, any um, frequent flyer program, you can either cash it in for a flight somewhere, or right. they have a catalog of things that you can pick out of there. It's like, oh, you know, some earbuds or, you know, a, a pillow that you would use when you're on the flight or something like that. And so there are sometimes goods. And so Twitter could be doing the same thing as they could be saying that we will have some Twitter kind of products that maybe make sense for people. Maybe, maybe it is like a good camera system Right. to set up or yeah. a good audio mic or something that you would might right. want as a content creator that's very or, easy or, or hell what about what about a new phone right you know a that new phone i mean yeah, there, yeah so i think there could be a variety of things like that that they could be thinking of and all sorts of other goods and services that would be right. useful okay yeah and that see this is where this is where things get really interesting because of course bitcoin and and the like have been attacked by not just the u.s government but by many governments and either outlawed or regulated to death because now if I have a Bitcoin and I want to change the money for US currency, it's not even a currency exchange. It's considered a, um, oh, what's the name for that? It's like a, uh, a capital security? investment. It's like a capital investment. I don't know. You get taxed okay. at a much higher rate for it than you would if you just exchange currency. It, it's it's very, oh, so very it's like high. a capital gain. Yeah, yeah. It's so, yeah, because exactly, because you have to give the cost basis. So if you purchase Bitcoin for $0, whatever, and you sell it for $20,000, your cost basis is 20 grand. That's that's a lot of money and that's a capital gain, which doesn't seem fair if it actually is a currency. But of course, that's not the yeah, way. Is it the same thing with a currency that if, if I buy a currency in January and it's low and then I sell it in December and it's higher, am I getting like an income on that? And is that taxable? Yes, it is. Yeah. 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 So I think it'd be, and it'd probably be, short-term capital gain if it's done over like a one right. year. So, so it's, it's but, you know, so anyway, way. so there is, there, yeah. that's where the, the friction comes the in. Man you, 
change. Yeah, the tax man always coming. But I mean, the way that the way that Starbucks gets around it, the way frequent flyer programs get around it is that it's not actual money. <laughs> it's just like loyalty rewards points or frequent flyer miles. You know, I could have 500,000 frequent flyer miles, which is meaningless, right? Because the only economy that that exists in is for Delta or United or something. Like there, there is no, but, but as you say, the interesting thing is it starts to go like, but yeah, but you could purchase an actual real object, a physical object that is not part of that economy, which means that that is actually worth something. So it becomes really interesting, the kind of line that they're walking between being a bank and not a bank. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's always those interesting things like garage sales. I always wonder whether there should be a sales tax, but because in right. theory, you're selling these goods at a loss. Right. It's 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 not unless you're like a professional garage sale person that goes around and buys junk and sells it for more later. And that, <laughs> that's a different topic. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is, in theory, is if there's ever an exchange between you and me, it's a it's a taxable exchange. So yes. um, if if I buy something from you and back back and we just keep on going back and forth, every time that dollar goes between the two of us, it should be taxed. Right. That's why I wonder is at the poker table, in theory, a lot of money is changing hands back and forth. Exactly. From a 10 point of taxation, it's like, well, wait a minute. As soon as John gives $10 to Scott because he lost that hand, whoop, there's going to be a tax. Or right. is it really something we look at at the end of the night? Or is it really one of those things that on your income tax statement, you have to say how much money you made from gambling and tips, right? Isn't right. there like, you, oh, you, yeah. So maybe that's where it's covered that we're allowed to have these things move around. And maybe the tax code will end up doing something like that of how much of this weird kind of other currency kind of income did you get because the governments are going to want to get their hands on it. Right, right. Which is, again, if, if and Elon is a very smart guy, but if you're a smart person, you navigate that by just going ahead and effectively negotiating that as you create it. You go to the major governments and you're like, this is what we're setting up. Or you just try to end around it. And you're just like, look, this is meaningless. This is worthless outside of our own economy. It's just- it's like just, Starbucks. They just yeah. did it. Yeah. And, and they get away with it too, because that is, they're meaningless. Their loyalty reward points are not worth anything except the coffee you can buy in Starbucks or the cups you can buy in Starbucks or the cookies you can put. So it's like, wait but, a but second. But I think How the difference is, is that, I mean, everyone has um, a gift card. It's basically a gift card and gift cards yes. are highly regulated. They, you, you have to make sure there's an escrow that the, the money can really right. be used. It might expire after like five or 10 years or something like that. So it is very heavily regulated. So even if some mom and pop has their own gift card and they set it up through that thing, you can you know that it's actually going to work. It doesn't right. have to be from a big brand that you would be able to trust it. I think the difference is, and then you, of course, you have the loyalty programs that American Airlines and Lufthansa and all the others have, right. and, they, and they also have their own credit cards, but they're kind of separate. It's like you're accumulating these points towards flight. Right. There's some questions about whether that's taxable or not, but you know, it's kind of there looking the other way, but they're not really tied together. It's, it's right. not really like those things suddenly become dollars on your credit card. Now, dollars on your credit card can become points the other way, but they're sort of separated. What, right. uh, what Starbucks has done is it said, well, wait a minute, this gift card that you are basically buying, and that's what you're doing, you're loading up with money, right. we're also going to be putting that other currency right on top of it. And yes. that's where it starts to get confusing because it's almost like those points actually have a value because a thousand frequent flyer points. No one has any idea how much it's worth. It has right. no currency value. Everybody, exactly. Well, what is it? Is it, you know, $10? Is that how much it's worth? And you can say, well, yeah, it, internally, they must have something to figure out that you need this much to be able to take a flight. Yeah. But it yeah. really isn't pegged to anything. Yet it seems like Starbucks has pushed that envelope just a little bit more. Right. Yeah. Because you know that, how much a coffee costs. It's like, that's three fifty. Yeah. It's like, well, okay. Right. Right. <laughs> so. But maybe they separate it by saying it's, no, we're not putting $5 onto your card account. We're just putting a cup of coffee on your card account. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's very different. That because There's the idea of these currencies being backed up. I know years ago, there were some experiments by economists that you always had the idea that the, uh, you know, the dollar is backed by, a, by gold. You want yeah. to have a gold standard. Yeah. And the idea it should be backed by something. And there were these currencies that were backed by certain things, by uh, 10 different products. And some of them were like wheat, and then um, I, I know that was one of them. There, there may have been like a metal that was involved in there, a bunch of these other things that were a way of backing up the currency so that you had something, it was guaranteed that this $10 bill would give you a certain amount of grain. 
for a certain right. amount of rice. Right. For certain right. amounts, it was like absolutely pegged to that. And so it's almost the same thing. Is Starbucks basically backing their currency with coffee? <laughs> That's interesting. And lattes <laughs> and, and you know, whatever. It's, let's let's it's, be it's real about way. Starbucks. If we're gonna if they're gonna back it, they should be backing it with sugar because most of what yeah. they sell is sugar. So yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Um, but yeah, that's really, it is interesting, but I think you could argue the casino rule for something like X or Twitter coin or whatever, that you buy into it. And until you remove that and exchange it for whatever currency you want to, it's all liquid. It just moves around. There's no cost associated with that. So again, like you're playing poker and it's just, you just take the coin and you move it. it when you want to go to the, you know, to the, whatever is that? What do they call that thing? The place where they actually do the money exchange, but they're behind the cage. Um, anyway, oh. <laughs> yeah, the, but, but you know, everybody the, who's been in the casino the knows it's the guys behind I'm, the bar. I'm thinking of the beer, you know, the beer de shunt. It's not the beer de shunt, but it's probably the teller, <laughs> not the cashier. The teller, the teller, I think that's what it is. Anyway, but when you go to the teller and you want to exchange it, that's when the taxation happens. Right. So, you know, it's it's all smooth until you want to take that out yeah and basically what currency. happens inside the casino stays inside the casino. exactly exactly that would be the argument that you would make and that also i mean i'm not going to argue for governments because reasonable and governments don't often go together but that would be a reasonable way to think about it too is at the end of the year it's like how much did you pay into this and how much did you take out because again there's a cost basis so if i if i bought a hundred dollars worth of mm -hmm. x coin and i took out that many X. So I bought however many that was with that, but I took out that same amount, but I only got back $80. That's actually a loss. What if you, what if it's thought of as shares? Cause I mean, think about it. Mm. When I buy any sort of security, um, I can hold on to it for as long as I want. And, right. and the, the government, I mean, well, I know uh, let's hope like that that doesn't tax. change because they keep talking about changing. That yeah. Role. But <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Elizabeth Warren can start. Maybe she can take a class in economics first. <laughs> yeah. so the, the, the whole thing is that when you buy shares in something, there is um, there's no transaction cost there. It's only when you decide to sell it. Exactly. Now, I know there are some weird gray areas that you have some countries that have wealth tax in, in for instance, Germany does not like you owning certain shares if you're a German resident that get kind of nebulous. And because if they're not set up a particular way, they will actually put an amount on it and force you to have to pay a tax. But from the standpoint mm -hmm. of the US, I buy shares in Microsoft and I hold on to them for 10 years. Every right. calendar year, I do, even though the value goes up, I do not have to pay anything. Right. So as right. so long as they're not paying right. me dividends, there's no taxable event going on until I decide to sell the shares. Right. Right. So it would be the same thing here with that is like, you would have the cost basis of what went in, the cost basis of what went out. And right. if instead of being a currency, if you almost start, it's like you're, you're literally buying shares and, and then people are trading shares. The only thing is that if I have Microsoft shares and I say, John, here, I want to trade you my Microsoft shares. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> I, I, there's there's kind of a problem of reassignment and everything else. And right, I think at that right. point, I literally would have to sell the shares and then give you the money to buy them right. back. Well, but but there is a there is an analogy. If you die, if you go back to the old days when you could buy shares of AT and T, it was literal pieces of paper. And yes. so, of course, one of the things that thieves could do back then was steal those pieces of paper. So it was more like a dollar bill at the time and less like a ledger. So if you again, if you treated it as more of a ledger of a physical object, like a physical chip in a casino it doesn't really have any value on itself, but what the value is, is when you trade it in. The with transaction, Twitter. right. Yeah, exactly. So nobody else nobody else can make that transaction except for Twitter in that case, or, or X, yes. right? So they're the only ones who determine the value of it unless it starts to go into the crypto market and becomes its own independent um, uh, cryptocurrency, then things would change. So it yeah. seems like the way to approach this would, at least at the start, you do the whole crypto you do the, the the blockchain, you set it up so that it could eventually move out. But at the beginning, it's all internal. And that's the way you probably would avoid it. It's all inside the casino. And only when you want to take that out and convert it to dollars or euros or whatever, at that point, it would become taxable, but not before that. Hopefully. Hopefully. Well, again, like I said, assuming that the government is reasonable, the interesting thing about this is, is if 
with something like that, if the government wanted to go after Twitter slash X, they would probably have to go after things like Starbucks and even potentially frequent flyer miles a little bit if you can buy physical objects with. So they would start to unwind a very, very complicated series of, of things that companies really like. I'm, sh I'm sure Starbucks loves having $10 billion in the bank of our money, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so. yeah absolutely. But yeah, I mean, hopefully when Twitter does it, it's not going to, the ledger's not going to be maintained on an Excel spreadsheet in the Bahamas. No, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Or, or like the actual U.S. banks on freaking COBOL on mainframes oh, from the 1960s. Exactly. <laughs> let's exactly. let's be real here. That's terrifying. Those machines are ancient, and they're running on on computer code that nobody can even program anymore. For goodness' sake. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I mean you, you know lest we think that all this like U.S. currency is very safe and everything. It's like well, it's the same thing. It's you just think we had a, a Y2K problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a everybody who knows how to program COBOL is dead problem. That's going to be the yes. problem. <laughs> That's going to be the problem. Yep. Man. Anyway. All right. So, so yeah. So, so the obvious thing would be for, for X Twitter to start with this sort of little tip chip that you could have, and you could purchase for relatively low cost for each one that would make it really fun as an ecosystem. It would be really fun to give somebody a chip. Like, it's like, you mm -hmm. made me laugh. You did good research, whatever. Here, have this. It's the, the cost is so low. So that's number one. That's step one. Step two, of course, is that you create this coin as a, as a blockchain ledger cryptocurrency. And, and you encourage people through whatever it is, gamification, you, you encourage people to hold this to some extent. You still want them to be relatively liquid so that they're happy to like exchange it back and forth but that you want them to hold some certain amount of that so that you then create an ecosystem that's growing and growing and growing. And there's more and more and more of these kinds of coins. And then you eventually transition that out to its own currency so that if, you know, Scott and I this year got a couple hundred of these coins, maybe in 10 years, that's not worth like 40 bucks anymore, but it's more like worth right. a couple thousand. It's like, whoa, that's great. You yeah. know, so- and, and there's the other possibility. If you hold on to it, there could be interest. Yo, oh, interesting. There's oh. there's nothing to say that uh, that couldn't potentially happen. That oh. if you sit it, that you end up getting a couple, you know, a certain percentage of growth out of that every year. Right. Especially if that means that Twitter or X or whoever is running this has been able to take that currency and deploy it because they, they will yeah. have that capital. Right. And the other well, thing. Well, and remember, their currency is going to be fiat currency because we're going to have to buy in with actual money, like right, actual, oh, right, sorry. right. <laughs> with with fiat money. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they'll, they'll have all this fiat money that they could do whatever they want with it. Um, and of course, the other thing is, I'm, I just have a feeling in the end, the nickname for this coin is probably be like the meme coin. Yeah. It's probably going to turn <laughs> out that the people who have the best memes are the ones that are getting all the tips. Right. So <laughs> if you think there's a lot of memes on Twitter right now, it's going to be like an explosion. There won't be one tweet that's not a meme. But this actually, okay, just to finish this up, this actually ties back to what we were talking about in the previous video, which is that you want content creators, you want people to find value in Twitter. And what better way to find value than it's like, oh, wow, people are actually throwing, you know, it's like, it's like you're the, 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 what's that, the busker, the guy who's playing at the subway station and people are like throwing coins at you. It's like, cool. You know, you're going to keep doing what you do and you're going to move more of your time onto Twitter. Yeah because you're directly making more money. You're seeing an immediate response. You're, you're literally that. banking coin. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. This seems like a good plan. And it without a doubt aligns exactly with what Elon Musk has talked about since the 1990s. So I think we're onto and, something. We're planting a flag. We're planting a flag saying something yeah, like this and is and going think to happen. If you, you do that, what becomes very good is that the problem with social media is no one's really been able to figure out the best way to monetize it. Yes. So you remember when, when Facebook went out, they they had lost all kinds of money. They had no way of doing it. And it's like, well, we'll figure it out later. Right, exactly. <laughs> so eventually they were able to get to profitability. But in the end, it always came down to ads, 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 ads. Right. And that's what a lot of people just do not like about social media is that you you need the ads to run it. But at the same time, you can't really make it free. But if right. you, you make it a reasonable entry cost, I mean, Netflix is not free. Right. Amazon Prime is not free. People right. are willing to do that and they are getting a lot of content from it. Yeah. So well, people, how much people are you get value yes, out of it. Yeah. Do you right. get 16 bucks a month value out of Netflix? If yes, then you get, you get yeah, yeah. versus me being what 
hundred dollars as a product, something like that, because yeah, that, that's exactly. the Facebook model is that you are the product. So you, there will still be like potential for ads in there, but the ads are going to be good ads because they realize the only way that you're going to be able to compete in that ecosystem right. is people are either going to shut you off or they're going to start rating ads in a particular way and say, this is a dumb ad or they're completely <laughs> lying or something like that. And if you're using the tip model, then suddenly you have a way of being able to monetize it make yep. sure that the content starts to become pretty good quality. And right. then, you know, suddenly Twitter is actually able to make money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so why not? It, yeah. I would be nice to see something that does not rely so much on advertisement. Yes. That Where, advertisement can yeah. be a small amount of it, but it should not be the majority. Yeah. It's the cream on the, it, it's the, cream on the top. That's it. That's all right. it should be. And, and, and this, you know, a lot of people really, really, gave uh twitter hell when they were like to be verified you have to pay eight bucks a month or whatever people are getting used to it but there's a lot of people who still don't do it but i think the question was the value with this this would increase the sense of value it's like okay i paid 20 bucks for these coins but i posted a good tweet and people liked it and suddenly i got a whole bunch of coins that's that makes me feel like oh there's some value in all of this stuff and, and it also, as you say, it helps Twitter stay afloat because of course, every time people put in $20 to buy the coin, they're getting uh, they're yeah. getting that actual money that they can then go and deploy and try to make some short-term you know, loans or, or interest or something like that. So yeah. Yeah, and, and you're not obliged to, uh, to give those. I mean, to, to no. every month to buy 20, it's, it's, it's on you whether you buy $20 or $100 and, and yeah. what your consumption rate is. Exactly. And that makes it a bit more of a, a sustainable model Right. And one that everyone would say is, is, is kind of a fair way of doing it. Um, I'm trying, trying to, you know, in, in many cases, that's, you know, some creators like the fact that their content is sort of free to a lot of people, but right. subsidized by others who can actually afford to subsidize it. Yeah. And why not? Yeah. 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 And again, it sets it, it sets it up for the future when you could have a currency that has because Elon's talked about this. The big problem with Bitcoin, he says, it's good for long term savings, but the transaction cost is too high. Dogecoin, he is much happier with, even though it was just a joke at the beginning. But <clears throat> hell, maybe he'll buy Doge. I don't know. But but you know, it's like the idea is that you've got something like cash that you can just exchange very very easily and frictionlessly, and the transaction cost isn't high. So if they are creating their own sort of coin, the idea would be that this would be a low cost, low barrier to entry, low transaction cost type of coin that would be very very easy to exchange. The ledger would be simple to rewrite. It wouldn't take a gigantic amount of mining and all of that kind of stuff. And, <clears throat> you know, however they want to do it. I'm not smart enough to know about all that stuff, but I do know that there are very smart people who work on these kinds of things. But that's, it seems like that's a, that's a reasonable potential outcome. All right. Anything else to talk about? I uh, know. I can't think of anything else. Okay. <laughs> Jeez, we've, we've covered the entire monetary system at this point, so why not? All right. So anyway, uh, we will let you all go. Let us know what you think about this and whether you have other ideas that could be done with X slash Twitter, Twitter coin or whether there's a better idea. Uh, for sure, we would be really interested to find out about that. And in the meantime, of course, everybody like and subscribe, do all of that good stuff, and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.